Hello, my amazing art students. Today, we are going to be making some really fun kind of wacky burgers. But before I show you what we're going to do, I want you to take a look at some different examples. Right here is a delicious looking mac and cheese burger where there's a mac and cheese for the bun. Would you eat that? Here's a, oh, a spaghetti burger. Very unique. Anyone guess what that is? That is a fried frog leg burger with a black bun. Now, they don't all have to be that unique, but we are gonna make some really tall, tall burgers. We're gonna fill them with different things. Before we do, take a look at this. This is the principle of design, unity. On the left here, all of these circles are united because they are all yellow and they're all circles. Then take a look on this side. There's unity because they're all circles and all the same size, but the variety comes in the colors. On the left, there's variety because they're all different sizes. Now to make unity and variety with our sandwiches, I want you to think about what sorts of maybe themes or topics could you do? On the left here, the student chose art supplies. That gave it unity. They were all art supplies. The variety is that they're different kinds of art supplies. On the right over here, the unity, can anyone guess what it is? They're all wind up toys. They're all different kinds of toys. Variety is that they're different kinds of toys. Unity is that they're all toys. Now I want you to think about, um, maybe pause the video and think about what sorts of topics could you do for your sandwich? It doesn't have to be food, but what sorts of things could you do to give it unity? Pause the video. Okay. Hopefully you came up with a few good ones. Here's some of my suggestions. Maybe you could do a seasonal burger. You could do all winter theme or all spring themes. Maybe you just wanna make it all sorts of different kinds of food. Maybe you want candy or toys. You could make an animal burger and draw your favorite animals. You could pick a theme. For example, you could do all fruits or all vegetables. Or maybe you could fill your burger full of different kinds of balls and sports equipment. I'm gonna share with you um, what I did. And this is not 100% complete, but I made a food and candy and sweets burger. Whatever your theme is, what you're going to do is you're going to take your long strip of paper. Now in the corner, I want you to make sure you write your name. So I'm writing Miss Shaquin. And then your class code, whatever it is. I'll pick, maybe I'll be in seventh grade today. My teacher's Mr. Smith, 7S. If you, if you uh, don't remember your class code, ask your teacher, your guest teacher today. Now, flip it over, make that name, kiss the table. Mwah! To do the top of the burger, what I like to do is a rainbow line for a big curved bun and then a horizontal line to connect it. Go ahead and do that now. If um, the guest teacher would please pause the video. Okay, once you're done, we're going to skip this middle part, go to the bottom. Now the bottom of the burger is often not as tall as the top. So I'm going to save a little bit of room Maybe I'll do a upside down rainbow line, maybe kind of like a big U. Again, it's not quite as tall as this one. And I'll do another horizontal line across. If you want to be fancy and add some sesame seeds to your bun, you could. Over here on this one, I added a toothpick with, I'm gonna make this cherry tomato. You can make it something silly or something to match your theme. I think for this example, I'm going to do a spring theme because it's a beautiful spring day out. So some of the things that 
I think of when I think of the spring are flowers. So for this first layer of my bun, I'm going to fill it with some flowers. Now the key is you want your ingredients to touch each other. If they're not touching each other, it's going to kind of look like they're floating. If they're touching each other, it looks like they're all kind of pressed together. Now you might notice when I am doing this, I do some overlapping lines. This flower is underneath the other flowers. So when I get to the bits where it runs in, I'm just gonna skip it, pretend like I'm drawing it and keep going. Okay, something else, oh, maybe I'll add, do you see that space there? I don't want it floating too much. So maybe I'll do one that's really underneath. You can barely see it because of the overlapping lines. I'm pretending to do my petal. Whenever I get to my open space, I'll draw that line. Okay, I also think about birds. I can finally hear the birds chirping in the spring. So maybe I'll make a bird in my burger. I'm gonna do the head right now, and then I'll do the body. Notice how my overlapping lines, I'm just skipping the petal. There's the body of my bird. Maybe I'll do some tall tail feathers. And I'll do my eye, pupil, and a little beak with a smile. Maybe it wouldn't be smiling because it's in a burger, but this is a happy bird. No one's gonna actually eat this burger. It's a good thing I used pencil so that I can erase any lines that I need to. Maybe I'll do a wing on the side and some feet. Hmm, what should he be standing on? Well, in the spring, it also rains a lot. So maybe I'll just make a watery area or maybe I'll make a bird's nest. The options are limitless. There, I just did the back foot. Maybe it's sitting in a bird nest. You know, in some countries they eat um, soups made from bird's nests. I actually lived in a town where they made bird nest soup in Thailand. And they had these big areas where all these birds would keep their nests and then they'd go harvest them. Maybe I'll do, ooh, a bunny because in the spring, also, I see lots of bunnies coming out in my yards, or I could start filling in the space with different kinds of flowers. I could do a tulip over here, whatever you want. I'm going to stop there because I think you guys probably get the idea, but after you fill up your sandwich with all of your things that relate to your theme or your topic, you can outline with Sharpie. Now you all should still have a Sharpie um, that I gave you, but if you don't have it, raise your hand and ask to borrow one very nicely. Don't forget that Sharpie bleeds through paper, so you need to put something underneath it. I would recommend your sketchbook. I don't have a sketchbook up here, so I could use another piece of paper. Whatever works, but you're just going to, let me flip this around so it's back. Take your time. Go right on top of your lines, kind of like you're a race car. Whoops, sometimes you go off the line and that's okay. Do you remember what you do if you go off the line? Gotta get your eraser and just erase it and then no one will even know. To color in your silly sandwiches and your silly burgers, you can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, markers, or maybe both. I've been using crayons for mine, but whatever you have works. And again, if you happen to um, not have a certain supply today, just kindly ask our guest teacher and they will get you something to color with. If you finish early, you can do a coloring sheet or color in your sketchbooks. I hope that you have fun making these. When you're done, put them in your sketchbook so that I can see them when I get back. Um, I hope you are very kind and follow the expectations and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Goodbye.